Okay, then welcome back to Ask Uncle Lee Wednesday. Um, I, uh, I am pre-recording these in advance, and this is going to be the last week, unless I get more questions between now and two weeks from now. Um, so <laughs> definitely put some questions in the in the uh, comments. I um, hope I've got more by now, for the next one anyway. Okay, um, yeah, so just flood me with questions and we can add them all to the list and start going through them. All right, so uh, let's get started with this week's questions. Welcome to my channel. You are entering the world of magic and mysticism with your host, Lee W. Johnson. Keep the lights on and help improve the channel by becoming a supporter for just $2.99 per month. Hit the join button. Okay, so the first one is this one from Final Curse. Oh, mighty wizard Uncle Lee. <laughs> I feel like I've been summoned. Um, I do have a question, uh, maybe a tiny bit off topic, but I have no idea where to ask this elsewhere. Uh, I have recently been reading up on the, the Kabbalah, um, very basic book, but what is not explained is what is the relationship between the Sephira planets and Archangels? For example, Bina, Saturn, Archangel, whose name I forgot. Uh, why is it this way? What's its purpose? Why their relationship? Um, right, so when you get into the Kabbalah and specifically the Tree of Life, that is a lifelong study. Uh, or it can be, if you know, if you if that's your goal and your aim, um, that can definitely end up being a lifelong study. And still you're not going to unravel all of the aspects. Um, to try and put this as basic as I, I can, the sephira are emanations of a particular energy or vibration. Um, and those emanations become more solid as you're coming down from Keta down to Malkut. Um, it's becoming more solid and it forms into Malkut, um, which is therefore the earth. Um, now, because of those particular vibrations, that gets related to particular aspects uh, like the planets, the archangels, um, the names of God, the names of power, all of these things. Um, so in this case, you know, um, Bina is understanding and it therefore gets associated with the planet Saturn. Um, so, you know, if we go to Tiferet, Tiferet is is beauty. Um, it's the it's also associated with the heart center, um, and therefore it is associated with the sun, and also Archangel Michael, um, who is the aspect of fire. Um, so you've got all these associations. I mean, if we if we have a look at that, if we go a little bit further, um, the association with the ele element of fire, um, we can. If we go into kind of Chinese philosophy, Chinese medicine, uh, we find that fire is in the heart center. Um, have I got that right? Yeah, fire is in the heart center. Water is in, or the mid, the middle dan dandian, and the uh, water is then where we find the um, ancestral um, connection in the lower dandian. Um, what I was taught in practical Kabbalah is the same thing, really. You've got water in the belly, you've got fire in the chest. Um, these are where the the um, elements associate with the body. Um, in other systems, it, it switches, it changes. A lot of people put fire in the belly. Um, you know, we can have a look at this from maybe an Ayurvedic perspective of, um, you know, the fire which we find in our, our, our um, digestive system, which is in the belly. But that's a different association, completely different association. Um, so you've got different associations depending on, on what tradition path you're actually looking at. Um, but, you know, we can take just that one thing and go further and further and further into its significance, into its aspects, into its sim symbolism. This is all about symbolism. Um, but 
tying back to the actual vibration that that sephira holds. So that's why we have these particular aspects being associated, this sephira being associated with all these different um, aspects. Um, and when you study further, when you get more into it, there's then the different worlds of emanation. Um, so, you know, the, that changes even more. Um, and then you've got the paths that connect the sephira, which also hold particular symbolisms um, tied in with the tarot. If you go into the um, hermetic orders um, and such things. So if there's just symbolism everywhere. Um, but really it can be, it can end up being a, a lifelong study just to study the tree of life itself. Um, but uh, a very interesting, very worthwhile study. Um, you know, try not to take things out of context, really. Um, there are, there's, I mean, this has been studied for centuries. Um, and I think a lot of people in our more modern times have kind of taken this tree of life and just kind of bashed it to pieces and disrespectfully. So, you know, and just created all these new ridiculous things with it. But um, have respect for it because it really is a, a beautiful, amazing aspect of our our magic, our, our tradition, our our everything. Um, you know, it's a, it's an incredible inclusion to what we have. So definitely respect it, its roots, um, the Hebraic tradition it came from, and even further back to the Egyptian, um, etc. But uh, yeah, anyway, going to get off topic there. All right, so let's get on to the next question. Let's just go over here. Okay, and this is from... Uh, oh, let me just go over here so I can read this properly. Sorry. Dimitri. Tree Dimitrisks Tri seven seven. You know who you are. You tagged in the comments anyway. Um, so you will be alerted, I'm sure. Uh, Haley loved the hat. Thank you. It's a great hat. My daughter crocheted it for me. I occasionally forget it on this show, but I try to remember. Um, so I was wondering, what tools, if any, are you using in your personal practice and what is their purpose in your ritual? I'm actually um, very much a, a, a not tool person. Uh, I do definitely understand the importance of tools um, and the, the power they hold and they possess within um, ritual and practice. But I'm not. I'm actually not really much of a tool person. Um, I do have an athme. I do not use it. Um, I do have a wand, and I do have a skull, um, not a real human skull, a uh, resin skull, uh, which I have decorated specifically for my own purposes. Um, I do have a hearthstone, um, and let's see what other tools I have. I have a a, a black bowl. <laughs> which I put water into scry with. Um, let's see. Let's just go back to the one, one the skull and the, the hearthstone. Um, so the hearthstone is kind of like the embodiment of my own personal way, my path, my tradition uh, that I have been developing um, over the years. So that kind of embodies that, holds that particular energy. It is the hearth. It's the stone of the hearth, the heart. Um, then I have the skull, which is associated with the ancestors. Um, I am also a demonolater, and therefore I have decorated with, with sigils of Uranimus, Bulbareth, and Baba Al. Um, and I use that uh, in ancestor, specific ancestor work. Um, if you go into traditional witchcraft, there's a practice called tapping the bone, where you, you take a wand, or a particular thing I do anyway, you take the wand and you tap the skull um, in a... In a particular manner in order to open the road for the ancestors to come through and then you work with the ancestors in that manner so i have those are those three um my bowl my black bowl is just a black bowl it gets filled with water or chamomile tea or something like that for scrying um i have one altar um where i just my altar really is it is a bit of a working space um i do do workings on it if they are small enough because the rest of it is um, representations of the various spirits, the entities that I work with. So I have particular statues on it. 
Um, it's not something I kind of show publicly. Uh, all of this is very personal and very private, so I don't mind talking about it, but um, I'm not going to kind of display it like on Instagram or something like that. Um, for anybody who is becomes a personal student of mine, yes, they're going to see my altar and my working space and all such things because that forms part of um, the workings that we do as um, student teacher and as a group. Um, but uh, what else do I have that I work with? You know, your normal stuff, candles, incense, um, libation bowl, but these are all normal everyday or not everyday but normal working tools for for usual for the usual stuff um yeah not really i have my robe i have a robe which i, I wear sometimes i usually only wear my robe in like the colder months winter time um if it gets when it starts getting too hot i'll work sky cloud so uh, for my own, for my own personal workings anyway um if it's group group stuff i'll usually wear my robe and sweat my ass off but um yeah i've got my robe i've got a cord which is all symbolic um uh, you know the cord obviously has its own purposes um for me my cord is my witch cord is is very much my also my measure um so but you know these are all standard kind of things there's nothing particularly interesting well i guess it's all interesting but nothing really, you know, mind blowing or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of basically it. Um, so I'm going to go on to the next question then. All right. So let's see. All right. So as I said, this is the last question I have, and let me just go over here. It is from Penelope Greer five hundred seven three. Hello, hello. Off topic, but I have a question. My daughter was watching TikTok the other day, and one of the people she watches was talking about the demon Rizbul. Um, I tried looking up that name, but can't find anything at all. I even had her send me the link so I could watch it. I uh, thought maybe I was spelling the name wrong. According to the TikTok person, that's the right way to spell it. Is it a real demon? Okay, don't know. Never heard of it. So what I thought we'd do is a little bit of research together. Um, I just want to set to go to another screen so I can. Okay, so let's just go over to here and there we go. Right, uh, let me just move this down a bit so I don't cover anything important. Okay, so if we do a search for Rizbull, we get Rizbull Magazine, Rizbull Magazine, Rizbull Magazine. Obviously, somebody liked the name Rizbull. Uh, Rizbull name meaning. It's just your normal name search stuff. Magazine. All right, so this is probably why you couldn't find anything. So, what do you do if you're looking for something specific? You give it a specific search term and this in this case it is a demon that we're looking for what do we get uh, that looks like a anime planet so that's probably something to do with gaming demons and demonology no. um, all right so here we have oh, association with Rosia um, all right, so here we have Rusbull. Who is Rusbull? On a Reddit post. All right. Um, don't know what this has got to do with bathroom. Oh, it's an advert. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. We've got... Um, Wiki source. All right, and then you've got this long thing to read through. But does this even have Rizbull in it? So therefore, we do a Control F, 
um, and we do RISBL and we search for it. No, it was RISBL with a U. RISBL, there we go. And in this case, it's uh, on one occasion, the patient, a young woman of 17 or 18, lay on the floor before the altar, writhing, 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 uh, in convulsions with distorted features and foaming at the mouth while the priest carried on a dialogue with the de devil whom he addressed by the name of Rusbel. Uh, the fiend's answers being, of course, spoken by the voice of the frantic girl herself. At last, a number of demons were supposed to come out of the patient's body and such scenes were repeated for days in the presence of some spectators till a riot arose and the civil authorities intervened but put a intervening put a chop to the whole affair okay so we have a demon or entity spirit called uh Rizbal. and this was in the encyclopedia botanica ninth edition under de demonology okay what else do we have uh this here Okay, see, what is this? Hang on. Uh, I did some digging on Google Scholar and was able to find a very long scan of a book that makes mention of this exact story. Um, all right. Okay, so this is a story about Rusbol. Uh, if we again do a, a find, find the name, what do we have? A Rusbol story. All right, turning to the prostrate, shuddering, most unhappy objects of his attack, the priest con comment commenced uh, in the name of, oh, page 69, <laughs> in the name of God, of the saints, of the blessed host, of every holy sacrament of our church, I abjure thee, Rusbol, come out of her, nota bene, uh, Rusbol is the name of a devil, the devil having 257 names in Catalonia. Okay. Um, all right, so this was a spirit which was obviously involved in a possession. Now, you know, the question then becomes, is this actually a, a diamond or was it an, an astral parasite? Um... Can we find anything pertaining to that? Not even a lot, even in gaming, hang on a sec, let's just go, because gaming's actually usually got quite a bit of interesting information regarding spirits. Um, you know, they tap into the, the actual sources, but there's nothing, not really much regarding that in Anime Planet. Uh, I did see something down here just now. Hang on. Uh, Devil's Night Manga. Rizbul, uh, Rizbul Benadane again. Let's see what this says about that character. Um, he looks happy. Rizbul Benadane is a top student at the Paladin Academy. Derivalale. Anybody who's a gamer will probably understand this more than I will. Um... Oh, okay, I can't really see the rest of it. Oh, okay. Uh, he's smart, agile, and hardworking. Everything was going well until Kendon knows a story about the, the actual manga. All right, so, no, I've got no idea, actually. Apart from the fact that it was, it's a, a name associated, Rusbel at least, is an a name associated with um, uh, a possession particular case of possession um not much within manga actually not as much, i say not much i mean if you have a look at some of the more popular names of the, the the diamonds from the goetia and things like that there's a lot in in gaming and manga uh, and anime so you usually do find a lot within gaming when you go searching for information um so not much even in regard to that so I don't know, maybe somebody, it's quite possible that somebody just read that story about the possession. Uh, sorry, let me actually just come back here. 
to the question screen. Um, somebody probably read the story about Resbol and decided this was something funky and cool and edgelordy and kind of ran with it. Um, is it an actual demon, an actual daimon, daimon? I would probably, I'm going to actually say no. Um, it probably is an astral parasite um, that got a name, uh, which is not usually a good thing to do. Um, and as I said, somebody just read the story, thought it was cool because now all of a sudden there's a name of a demon. We can create a whole scenario around this and a whole story. Um, so personally, I would not even bother. There's, there's thousands and thousands and thousands upon thousands of, of spirits out there to work with. Um, you know, it's not, it's not necessary to work with this nondescript um, entity that nobody has any history for. So one thing I just do want to do just in case, uh, let me just go back here to my, my Google screen. Um, just put in, so something I, I do also is just put Johannem because if it's on his website, there's going to be information about it. If it's not, then it's not, um, no, absolutely nothing regarding Rizbul. I mean, not all, all of the entities, there's a lot of Goetia spirits that are, don't appear on Johannem's site, but uh, he does have quite an extensive blog um, in regards to the spirits. So I usually go check there just in case, but uh, yeah, nothing. So I would say no, I wouldn't say real demon, just a, probably an astral parasite. Um, somebody created a story and ran with it and that's really it. Okay, so I'm going to, well, that's it. That's all the questions I've got. Um, as I said, if you've got more questions, please leave in the comments and I'll start uh, adding them to the list. Okay, so have a good one. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.